Over the last few seasons, the Dallas Mavericks have been trying desperately to get the right personnel around Luka Doncic on this team and ready to fight for a championship. Last season at the draft, we saw the Dallas Mavericks go out and get Kaysan Wallace and then trade for Derek Lively, and the rest was history. He had a pretty good season. It was a little bit up and down, some injuries, some mistakes here and there. But come playoff time, all those deficiencies just went away. He had one of the best playoff runs uh, as a rookie, the second highest plus minus. He helped this team just flourish in all three rounds heading into the finals. But Derek Lively does seem to be feeling himself as he found himself in some hot water today. He was on a podcast with Theo Pinson and just talking a whole lot of smack about Rudy Gobert. So in this video, we're going to go over exactly what Derek Lively said. I'm going to show you guys the video and audio so you can see for yourself. We're going to go over article, and I'm going to give you my own thoughts about the situation. But how's it going, everybody? My name is Marcel Martin. This is Mavericks Digest, bringing you the latest news on everything Mavericks related. And before we get started with today's video, the likes have been looking pretty good lately. The last video, about 50 shy of 300. But if you are loving what we're doing here at Mavericks Digest, if you can't wait for basketball season to return, we've got 50 days. 50 days until the regular season starts. If you can't wait just like me, drop a like on this video, and I'd appreciate it greatly. But like I said in the intro, Derek Lively, it feels like he was a godsend for us as we had many seasons prior with lackluster centers or centers that really just didn't fit what we were looking for. Some did play their role fairly well. We had Boban, Moses Brown. We had JaVale McGee, Willie Cauley-Stein. We had a bunch of bigs come and go over the last few years. But when we traded for Derek Lively on draft night, it just felt perfect. It felt like a match made in heaven. We saw the connection between him and Luka, him and Kyrie, him and the whole team throughout the entire rookie year last year was just amazing. And he continued that play going into the playoffs where you could argue he was a better player. While shooting 50% from the free throw line, he could not miss in that OKC series. And then going into the Minnesota series, he made four-time Defensive Player of the Year, Rudy Gobert, looked like a non-factor. So much so that he was on Theo Pinson's podcast today, and he had a lot to say. If we just take a look right here, Derek Lively II and Theo Pinson say there was zero reason for Rudy Gobert being on the court in the playoffs. Now, that little headline there could be misleading, could be a little bit of clickbait, but I'm going to play you guys a video real quick with the audio so you can see for yourself. Who's on the posters? Who's on the TV screens? Who's on the commercials? That player is definitely going to be on the Perfect floor. Perfect example. They played the Minnesota Timberwolves. There is zero reason Rudy Gobert should have been on that court. Zero. But you are paying him about $40, $50 million. You better get your ass out there and figure it out. And he didn't. And he didn't. And he did not. So He did not figure it out. Nope. Just like Derek Lively said, unfortunately, Rudy Gobert couldn't figure it out. Now, obviously, from his stats, they don't look like Rudy Gobert was a non-factor. He was still able, still able to help his team. But for the most part, it just wasn't really there. We end up beating the Minnesota Timberwolves in five games. Could have been four if Derek Lively didn't go down with that really bad head injury from Carl Anthony Towns. But if you, like me, watch that entire series, Derek Lively definitely looked like the better four, I'm sorry, the better center, not forward, the better center on the court at all times, able to catch lobs, get blocks, play great defense. Even when they try to switch and get Derek Lively out of the perimeter, he was still able to guard players like Anthony Edwards or Nas Reed with no problem. Derek Lively, I think, is allowed to talk his talk because he definitely has shown that he can walk the walk. But let's let's take a look at an article that really breaks everything down and see if there's more to these claims from Derek Lively. Dallas Mavericks rising star slanders Timberwolves Rudy Gobert. The reigning defensive player of the year caught some heat from the Mavs young star. This article says, Rudy Gobert of the Minnesota Timberwolves is one of the most hated players in the NBA by fans and players. Maybe it's because they don't think he deserves to have four Defensive Player of the Year awards. But when Draymond Green is on TNT during the Western Conference Finals openly enjoying seeing Rudy Gobert struggle, it's eye-opening. The latest example of Gobert slander comes from Dallas Mavericks up-and-coming star Derek Lively II and former Maverick Theo Pinson. Lively recently appeared at a EYBL camp and talked with Pinson, who hosts their free game podcast. One of the campers asked, is it true they play whoever makes more money? This was their response. And I showed you the video. That was their response. But the article continues saying Gobert definitely had his struggles in the conference finals against Dallas, but you wouldn't know it by looking at his stats. Besides only having four block shots, the Mavs simply figured out how to attack Minnesota no matter who was on the court, whether it was Gobert protecting the paint, allowing for spray put threes, or if they went with more mobility by sticking Carl Anthony Towns or Nas Reed at center, which got Dallas ball handlers downhill more often. 
Sometimes it's just a match about, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sometimes it's just as much about a game plan and executing as much as it can be about personnel. It also helped Gobert's stats in the Western Conference Finals that the Mavericks wanted him to touch the ball. Any possession that ended with someone other than Anthony Edwards, Nas Reed, or Towns shooting the ball was usually a win for the Mavs, especially when it was Gobert. When they were blowing the Wolves out early in Game 5, Gobert led the team in shot attempts in the first quarter with 7, which allowed Dallas to run out to a 35-19 lead by the end of the quarter, and the rest was history. We all saw what happened. Now, do I think Rudy Gobert gets unnecessary hate maybe i'm not really a big rudy gobert fan but he is he is a four-time defensive player of the year he's making like over 200 million dollars in minnesota the team didn't make it to the western conference finals so i'm not going to say he's a scrub or that he can't play but from what i saw the dallas mavericks did just outplay the minnesota timberwolves obviously that's why we went on to the finals but Derek Lively himself had a very good series he looked a lot better than rudy gobert but what that article says is true we allowed rudy gobert to do whatever he wanted when he got the ball obviously put a body in front of him even luca got a block on rudy gobert he also hit him that crazy step back three over him that we all saw so we obviously had a game plan. Jason Kidd did a great job at getting this team ready to play a team like the Minnesota Timberwolves, where they just beat the reigning champion Denver Nuggets and thought they could do the same to us. Nah, I'm sorry. It was not going to fly like that. The Dallas Mavericks were more, more prepared and better equipped to deal with a team like the Minnesota Timberwolves. And unfortunately, they weren't. And Rudy Gobert... You're catching some strays from our from our sophomore center. It might be unnecessary. It may be necessary. No matter how you feel, Derek Lively is gonna is really shaping himself to be one of those premier players in the league. Even though it's just his second year, you may not want to put too much on a young player like that. But if he can follow up this upcoming season with how he played last season, if he can do even better, the sky's the limit for Derek Lively. Who knows? This might be his team in the next four to five years. If Luka's still here, it's obviously still gonna be Luka Doncic's team. But who's to say? I mean, Derek Lively, his trajectory is going up. And when he's got just the right players around him, he's got Klay Thompson, Kyrie Irving, Luka Doncic, Tyson Chandler, Jason Kidd. He's got great talent and great minds around him that Derek Lively has all the tools at his disposal to be one of the best bigs in the league. And coming off a rookie year like this, hey, talk your talk. You made it to the finals and they didn't. But not everybody likes what they're hearing from someone like Derek Lively. So let's turn to Twitter and let's see what everyone else is saying. Someone here tweeted out saying, I was just wondering when all NBA G League second team Theo Pinson and NBA all rookie second team Derek Lively would weigh in on Rudy Gobert's playoff minutes. Someone else had this to say, saying there is not a single person on the planet that lives outside of Dallas, Texas, that is taking Derek Lively over Rudy Gobert. And finally, this person says Derek Lively is a glorified Clint Capella. Look, if you know, you know, I ain't got to tell you. If you know, you know. Derek Lively is the truth. He had a great rookie year. He's going to have an even better sophomore year. He's He is going to help this team win a championship, just like we saw him help this team go to the finals. In that first round of playoffs against the L.A. Clippers, where Daniel Gaffer was having a hard time up against Zubats, Derek Lively looked like a natural, looked like it was no problem. Second round, up against someone like Chet Holmgren. Again, Daniel Gafford could handle his own for the most part, but Derek Lively looked much better and better equipped to deal with someone like Chet Holmgren. Third round, up against Rudy Gobert, Carl Anthony Towns, Nas Reed, if you want. No one could stop Derek Lively. And then we go to the finals, and it seems like everybody just forgot how to play basketball. But at least for the first three rounds of the playoffs, Derek Lively did show that I might be a rookie. I might be 19, 20 years old. That doesn't matter. I'm on the court. I'm playing with some of the best players in the league, and I can keep up, and I'm going to prove it on a nightly basis. And again, I expect him to do even better this upcoming season as we have even better talent around him, which will make his job so much easier. But you guys let me know down in the comment section down below. Do you think that Rudy Gobert deserved to be on that court? Do you agree with Derek Lively? Let me know down in the comment section. We can have a conversation about it. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you for making this far to the video. Make sure you check out our Twitter and Discord. Links in the description below. Consider becoming a channel member. We are doing our giveaway this weekend. We're going to give away two or three free things. Not sure what I'm going to give away, but this Saturday, we're going to do a live stream where I'm just giving away free stuff. If you want to be part of those giveaways, make sure you become a channel member. And as always, take care. Drink water. Peace.